Hello, I wanted to show you an application running on a smartphone. This is an Android smartphone. Um, we've been working with uh, Adobe um, Flash Builder 4.5.1 and the new MapQuest mobile um, API. Um, and we, we've been building an a number of applications, but we've just put this one together, which is basically a, a field worker application. So it's really directed at people that are working in the field. So people uh, such as surveyors, um, maybe guys that are inspecting, uh, and the girls that are inspecting pipelines are maybe in the middle of nowhere, um, or others that, such as um, technicians who are fixing air conditioning systems or um, maybe even uh, insurance claims people are going to people's homes to, uh, to gather data based on a claim. So this application is directed to those people. The, the functions we've got within it are basically uh, a map and a, and, and a whole load of, uh, of, of useful tools for those people in the field. Check-in being one of the key tools and uh, collecting data in the field being one of the other major tools of the application. So that's the interface. Let's just open the map. Um, and as you can see, what we've got here is a fully functional map. Um, it's always available. It uh, it also inter it also, as you'll see, is the is the core piece of a number of the other tools that we'll see as we overlay on top of this. But what you're looking at here is basically um, a vector roads map, which has got um, my current location in it. So so we're actually using um, and my finger gestures are going to be a bit odd because I'm sitting at a funny angle because of this camera. So excuse that, I'll try and move a bit closer but uh, using the uh, the MapQuest API um, we've we've positioned ourselves and put a marker on the map as exactly our current location now this will change as one moves so the marker will change um, as you drive around to show your current location so let's go back to the home screen let's imagine that we've got, a, got something that's going out in the field um, they want to go from where they're, their current location or a particular location um, and they want to to arrive at a destination but they're not sure on their route so let's hit the directions widget uh, or direct, let's go to the directions view I should say um, what we've done here is we've just simply put together a simple from and to route there are a lot of very cool uh, things one can do within the the uh, MapQuest API to to do all sorts of different routing we're just going to do the simplest type of routing here from from one place to another so let's hit the uh, the get route button and we load the map we, we've kept the icon which shows our current location um, and we've uh, we've added to the map the route from the dest from the source to the destination um, so if I can get my finger tap together just try it from there see it's my angle of attack there we go um, so there's the destination. It gives it gives the the actual address and and lat long of that of that location. Now we could put multiple addresses in here. If we could imagine if a field worker was going out to multiple different addresses, we could actually add to the map um, the additional addresses. So we could have four or five addresses here. So if the worker was say going to check. Uh, a number of stores in Salt Lake then he'd be able to map out his route for that day and he could load it at the start of the day um, so let's go back let's do something else so that back button just takes you back to the previous screen if we wanted to change our route in here we could do that and then get route would then bring the map up again um, back to the home button now a key piece we spoke about is the check-in so let's imagine that the the person's gone out into the field uh, and they've arrived at their destination. So this is kind of a complicated screen. We would probably simplify this, but we wanted to illustrate in this demo what one can do with this. So let's imagine that we've got uh, the field worker's name is is Rory Biggerdike, and his ID is 1616. Uh, that's all entered. Now, depending on where it, how he wants to check in, now it could be an address check in. In this case, we've actually added um, the address, uh, an address for a 7-Eleven Salt Lake. Um, this could just as easily be a venue search as well. So in the in the way Foursquare works, we actually um, do a search for points of interest or venues that are close to you and list that and select from that list. 
we've just simply, as I said, added an address to it. Now, if we were actually not interested in a particular venue, a particular point of interest, a particular physical location, we were out in the field, we were surveying, and we wanted to actually um, check into a particular lat long, well, we can do that also. Um, so we've got the two options. Let's just do um, an address check in here. And there it is. Um, that would be a, a, an action that would just simply pass the name of, of, the, uh, of the technician or the field worker, the ID, the, uh, the date and time, and the location. And, and we've hit address here, so it gives the actual address, but this could be lat long as well. So if it was in the field, it would be lat long. So let's just uh, again go back. So we've done our check-in. We're great. We're good. We're working, but we want to know what's in the area around us. So let's do a local search. And again, this screen is a little more complicated than we would necessarily make it, but we, again, as a demo, we wanted to show that you can actually do a search by an address, or you can do a search by lat long. Now, there's a lot of other different searches one can do. So again, we've we've been selective in what we've done with the with the MapQuest uh, API. But let's uh, imagine we wanted to, to look within a certain radius of where we are, and I think I've set it to a mile of our current location. Um, so let's do uh, search by lat long. Now we load the map, there's our current location, there's our radius of the search, and then these are various points of interest based on our criteria that we want to look at. And I can get this. There we go. And there we have it. It's a park. It gives the address. It gives a lot long again. Number of other ones there. We could we could zoom in a little bit and, and make that a bit easier in ourselves, which we'll do in a second actually. So let's just clear that. We're gonna go back. And what we're gonna do next is just do a search by an address. So this is an address in Salt Lake. We we've set the maximum number of results and, and have had some other options in there. And let's just do a search by address. Now we've left the other search in place, so you can see that there is the other search that we we did. Here is the search we've just conducted, and let's just zoom in. Now this is in downtown Salt Lake, so it's selected uh, a number of places close to. Uh, actually, it's a pub that I quite like going to called Squatters, but there we are. Um, so. These are the various venues there. Let's get to zoom in a bit more again. If I was left-handed, this would be a lot easier. Being right-handed is a pain. And what we'll do is let's just select one of those venues. I really need to be zoomed in a bit more. There we go. Uh, so again, there there is one of the the, the green the green star in the middle is obviously the address we're searching from and they're pretty clustered because uh, there's a lot that's from downtown Salt Lake so there's a lot of places nearby so again it gives the information about that particular point of interest we could add pictures in there I mean that 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 pop-up can be enhanced to to a, a number of different ways we've just we've just used a simplest of, of, of output there okay so we're good with that let's go back so We've checked in, we've searched the area, we've, we've found where we're going to go, we've, we've checked in, we've searched the area. Now we could do it, we could do some geocoding as well. Now a geocoder is just simply an, an address search. We could actually just bring up a geocoder, we could, we could type something in. If we wanted to actually find where a particular location was, we didn't necessarily want a route there, um, we could use the geocoder just to, to place a point on a map. And again, we've We've added uh, we've added coordinates in. We won't, we won't show this one just for time's sake, but this one works really nice. It adds a marker to the map of that particular place. So one of the key th pieces of this pie is um, of this application, I shouldn't say pie, is the check it, uh, is the is the uh, data input and data search. So what we what 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 often is the case is that if you're an insurance broker and you're a claim cl insurance claim person and you're in a house, you want to actually gather notes on say water damage in the house you want to take pictures you want to you could you even might want to take voice recording of what you're seeing so this application will allow them not only to to log where they are and what time they've got in there but they can also start at, at, start um, entering data and or searching for data so this top box here actually shows and we've just set a, a single date for it this could be a drop down this could be any type of search but in this case we're going to search on data um, 
at this particular locate they've taken this particular loca location on August the 1st of 2011 so let's do a search and just see what we come up with and there it is uh, hopefully that's easy to read the technician that that uh, would did that did this this work on the first was was Rory Biggerdike there's the date of it and there's the ad underneath that is the actual address um of the location there's a single image of, of of something they've taken in this case a boiler and there's some notes saying the boiler was replaced boiler pipe was replaced but they still have some, something else to do so the technician or, or or the insurance claim person has got a reference point to old data and they can look back at multiple pictures multiple notes any other information that relates to any previous visits to that particular location um, in terms of their current their, the current data input if they wanted to they could they can actually do a fine on images they've taken in the location so let's just uh, see what images are on the camera so this this is these are pictures actually taken using the camera and we're just going to select one so what we did there was we actually selected a picture of the of the the actual boiler and there's the actual name of the picture we could have reviewed it made the picture larger and done some other reviews on it but let's just make the presumption at the moment that, that, that that's what we want to do so let's attach that to the application and there it is it says image attached and we'll go back and there we've got it we've we've got the name of the image that we've attached now we could lots of other images to this again we could use we could we could actually do um, a voice, some voice input as well. If we didn't want to type, we could record. And, and we've got notes here, so people can actually write notes um, about what they're seeing. So, uh, lots of flexibility in how we collect, gather data in the field. Re a really, a really uh, useful tool, I think. Now, we could do two, one of two things. We could store this as part of our check-in, so we could attach it to the check-in. And if we hit that button, that would then store that data, the imagery, the the voice, the voice data, um, any text um, on the on the client server, um, which could obviously be recorded at a later date. Or if we were actually out in the field, if we were a surveyor, and we didn't have um, we didn't have uh, access to Wi-Fi, but we still got GPS, we could actually store this data on the device. So uh, what we could do is we could actually store it on the database that's on the device. When we come back into range of, of Wi-Fi, um, we could then upload that to the server. So let's just do that. Actually, no, we'll, we'll attach it to a check-in. There we go. So it says data storage complete. Good. And there we have it. So lots of tools there that be, could be very useful to people in the field. As I said, uh, MapQuest have got some really great APIs out there. We can integrate many different types of, of local searches in here we can in incorporate traffic in here we can do all sorts of routing um, different types of routing as well and a bunch of other things so a very cool application I think and one I think uh, could have lots of potential applications thanks for watching